Hey everybody, welcome to Unscripted, where we're all about having better conversations and thinking more deeply and critically about faith, life, and leadership. Mm-hmm. My name is Sam, and I am here today with another special guest. I am so, I'm so thrilled to be able to sit down and chat with you, Jeanette Stone. Thank you. I am so excited. I feel the same about you. Awesome. <laughs> Can for those who don't know you, mm-hmm. I, I was wondering if you could just give like the the 30 second elevator speech about who you are. I mean, it's like a much longer one if you wanted, but just tell us about who you are. Uh, Now I'm doing a lot of counseling in my life and uh, speaking when, uh, you know, God gives me the occasion. Uh, But I've done a lot of things in that we were just talking just briefly prior to starting this, uh, that I have never had a lot of fear. And, but I had a fearsome childhood. So you would think I would be fearful. Yeah. Uh, But as, my, as a counselor, I always ask people, what did you learn from that? Hmm. And I think what I learned from my childhood is I didn't have to be afraid. You can always do something. Uh, so anyway, because of being kind of a free spirit, uh, and it matches my personality, I do not like detail, and usually I'm late or you know whatever, or overspeak or whatever it might be. Um, I've done many different things. I started at three different preschools. I'm a, I'm a great uh, beginner of things. Uh, I get the idea and, uh, and begin it because I dare to do a bad job. I dare not to be perfect. Yeah. Uh, and thank you, dear Father, for that because it has given me such freedom. Yeah. Uh, to do what's on your heart. Uh, started the preschool, three, the, the three preschools, uh, two for churches, one I owned, um, counseling center in Von Lack decades ago, uh, a youth drop-in center. Wow. Uh, just yeah, just to begin it, to begin it, uh, and get other people excited about it, so I can pass it on. Yeah, uh, totally. Because I tend to get bored. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so this will not be a boring conversation. Uh, I have no doubt about but that. But the only thing that doesn't hasn't uh, really uh, bored me is counseling, because each person that comes in is so unique and so different uh, that I'm excited about meeting them, you know, and knowing them, uh, and speaking. Uh, as you know, you know you've you've seen me speak. I uh, really go off grid a lot uh, as the Lord leads me, and see that's exciting. That's a beautiful thing. I, I love it because you mentioned like 17 different things in that little <laughs> intro. It's just who you are. You, you've done everything. And, and yeah, I think that's really, really special that you um, see counseling as this thing that never gets old. Yeah, it does Because each person is so unique. You yes. get to know them. You get to understand them. Maybe mm-hmm. you get to help them. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I want to talk about that. Why, why is it that you love counseling? Like what, besides that part of it, have you, you've done it for a long time. What yes. are some of the things that just reach out to you like that's something that you love to do I love it that people will come in thinking they have to be fixed and that they have to uh, be different than they are and probably the first thing I try to to show them is you are fine you don't need to be fixed Uh, you you God has planned you to be the way you are took 8,000 generations to make you sweetheart so that does not mean that means that you know we're not to cause be a you know have a lot of time trying to change that yeah Uh, what we learn, I think, uh, especially as we age, is how to use who we are. Uh, but we don't change who we are. We are born with our temperament. Uh, and I was born with this temperament. Uh, I'm a youngest child. Uh, I never had to succeed. And I didn't succeed. I squeaked through school, truly. Uh, uh, you know, I don't like anyone telling me what to do. No. Uh, yeah, <laughs> rules are for everybody else. Uh, <laughs> but God uses that. He sure does. See, God, you, what we think is wrong, and that could be a wrong. I could use it wrongly, and I have. Uh, we use it for good. And that's, I guess, my purpose in counseling. Awesome. So that, you said a couple things that, that I've not heard much. I love that you don't, you're not here to be fixed. No. That's no, a beautiful no, thing to say. No. Um, and then my favorite thing you just said is it takes 8,000 generations <laughs> to make you, sweetheart. <laughs> I think that was just beautiful. <laughs> Um, it's so true. It's so true. Like how, uh-huh. how we've gotten to here is so crazy. So, so let's talk about here for a moment. Okay. Um, we are in the year 2021 Yes. and man, yes. the last 12, 13 months mm-hmm. have been just mm-hmm. a ride right. for so many people. Mm-hmm. And, and I wanted to ask you about that. You've, you've certainly continued to counsel through this oh, last yes. bit. Yes. Uh, what has been, what has stood out to you as 
I, I know you say everybody's different and unique, mm -hmm. but what has stood out to you as some common things you've experienced and, and heard from people over this past year? A fear. Fear. Uh, they are afraid. Even uh, really what I would consider maybe very mature Christians, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, they are, are fearful or they think someone's out to get them, that there's some kind of, really, some kind of worldwide conspiracy over whatever. Uh, so you don't think there's a conspiracy? <laughs> no, I, good, no, I don't. Good, no, I hope no, I don't. <laughs> no, I do not think it's a conspiracy. Good. And, and by the way, though, even if it was, God's in control. Yeah. Uh, I believe in the complete sovereignty of God. Uh, and anything that's been in my life or, or anything, any mistakes we have made, uh, God uses that for good. Romans 8, 28, of course. Uh, so, no. So there's nothing to fear. We can relax as a Christian. Uh, and that's part of counseling, though. Relax and be who you are. Uh, and so you're not like, Sam or Jeanette, whatever. Uh, no, but you are unique in being who you are, and the, and the world needs you. Uh, the world needs the Sam. The world needs the Jeanette uh, to, to be able to say, lighten up. Yeah. You, know, uh, uh, you know, is it that important? Uh, you know, what did you learn from that? Uh, uh, so if we think we're wrong, and there are many people that do, and that there is a wrong going on, especially this last year, there's somehow a wrong going on. Uh, no, uh, you know, there isn't a wrong going on. Uh, we have an illness going through our world, uh, but we have just great scientists working on this. Yeah. They, but they don't know all things. Mm -hmm. They're not sovereign like God is. They are not, like so they are not yeah. sovereign, and, and we don't know all things. No, we're not God. No, but don't you think it's wise to know what you don't know? I think that is the begin one of the beginnings of wisdom, right? Fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. I think that's yes. step two yes. is knowing what you don't know. You're knowing what you don't know, right. Uh -huh. right. I think you're absolutely right. So that's what I see this year, uh, and it's I've had to stop uh, being disappointed in people. Tell me more about that. Uh, people that I felt, uh, you know, mature Christians who are uh, fearful that there's some kind of evil going on that they can't handle, or, or some kind of conspiracy that it's going to overtake us. Yeah. Uh, they have forgotten. How did they forget? How did they forget, see, that God's in control? Uh, and it's hard, it's hard maybe as a friend of somebody. Yeah. Uh, I'm not always counseling, you know, although I'd like to always be counseling. <laughs> you love to be telling people, yeah. hey, let me figure this out. <laughs> let me tell you about that. <laughs> uh, but so to sit and hear that uh, kind of thinking and lack of faith uh, from people that have sat in church uh, for their life, mm -hmm. uh, and that's as far as they've gotten in their faith. See, I see a weak faith. Yeah. I see a weak faith. I guess that's what I see this year. Okay, here's the question I wanted to ask you, and, mm -hmm. and it's a little bit is a, a difference in it. Um, you say it's a weak faith. Well, the question I wanted to ask you, but I want to go on this particular note for it. Okay. The question I wanted to ask you is what does an emotionally and spiritually healthy person and strong person look like? Um, so let's start with what does a person who has strong faith actually look like? How can you tell? And experience somebody what 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 comes out of their mouth what do they how, how do they hold themselves do you know what I'm saying mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What, to you as you've experienced people who really do have strong faith mm -hmm. what does that look like to you well again knowing who uh, believing in God is is God mm -hmm. is in charge uh, it, this story is about him not about Jeanette Stone huh. uh, and this is God's story that we're living uh, and uh, to know that uh, to me that is strong faith that does not mean we're not going to cry uh, we're not going to have losses uh, you know I have three sons eight grandchildren and none of them live next door to me right so there are times when I leave them I cry I miss them uh, we have we're human yeah. So, so we experience these kind of feelings. Does not mean that we aren't a uh, strong Christian. That's that's exactly it, though, right? Like, you want, to be a faithful person and a f person filled with faith actually means you're more human. Yeah, oh, definitely. And yeah. and that means you're going to experience things more. I mean, this has been an awful year for a lot of people. Yeah. And and, yeah. and I think some people think you should just snap out of it. Yeah, right. Like, and right. I don't think you can, right? No, no, I don't think you can at all. No, but there have been worse years. Worse years. Okay, what do you mean by that? Uh, well, look what happened in Germany. 
where yeah. the, all the Jewish people came. For sure, absolutely. But hello, honey, there have been 11 million babies killed over in the world with, through abortion. Mm -hmm. 11 million. And I have a site on my computer that goes click, 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 click as another baby is, is killed. Mm -hmm. That's far worse, mm -hmm. far worse than what we're going through with, with, uh, with right now with this illness. For sure. Mm -hmm. As you... As you think about and as you've counseled people, mm -hmm. um, what are the things that for you have really stuck out as ways that people can cope well with um, difficulties? I mean, this is something you normally do. So as you counsel someone, they've, whether it's this last year or any other year, you, you've had difficulty in your life, you've been struggling. Mm -hmm. and what are the first starting points for somebody? I mean, you're not here to fix somebody, but mm -hmm. how, do they, how do they grow? Uh, to be willing to grieve. Okay. Uh, be willing to be authentic. Uh, when things hurt, they hurt, uh, and it's okay to yell out and and to cry and to grieve. To me, the uh, the biggest uh, healing for grief is to grieve. Uh, and people think if they're a strong person, you know, they're not to be in the corner crying. No, if you're a strong person, you're authentic. Yeah. Uh, and as you said, you know, uh, we are human, and God God intended us to be human. This was not a mistake. Uh, so the fact that I think that would be uh, what, what is needed. And the people that are fearful uh, right now, uh, and, you know, not, not, I've gotten the two vaccines. I've gotten, you know what I mean, Bill and I have taken care of ourselves. Uh, but it doesn't mean we're not to use wisdom. And there seems to be, a, I call it a leap in logic. Okay, when people, it's, it's a leap in their logic. They think a certain way. But somehow they take a leap and begin to think another way. Uh, sure. And I, I just call it a leap in logic. Uh, so then the fact that, okay, they, they think a certain way, and they will take, they'll go to the doctor for their yearly check, whatever, whatever, but they refuse to take care of themselves to protect themselves against the virus. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and it's just not wise. Yeah. So what you're saying is, okay, I've lived my whole life following these basic principles. Yeah. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, something new comes along, and I stop following those principles. Right, right. And you, you would call that a leap in logic. You'd yes. call that. You'd call that. Um, would that have an impact on somebody's faith? So yes. uh, that's what I'm curious about. Yes. Like, how does this tie into yes. our faith? It hurts me to see it uh, because it's so confusing for people uh, living it, uh, truly. And so that's as a counselor is my job, but. As a counselor, I, I try not to take people any farther than they're ready to go. Yeah. So, so uh, and as you experience as a pastor, you know, you, you walk beside them where they are. Uh, and you wait for the opportunities, you know, yeah. uh, uh, to teach or to lead them or to, uh, to guide them. I have a lot of non-Christians that come. They know I'm a Christian. Uh, and I feel I follow that spiritually. And, and I think we are to follow that as Christians, as we're witnessing. Uh, you know, I have a, a friend who loves to knit, okay? Mm -hmm. And she loves to go to Hobby Lobby, okay? And I have many times spent lots of times <laughs> walking through Hobby Lobby with her because that's where she is. Yeah. That's her interest. So we are to care enough about people to be interested in what they're interested in. And But we won't do that. We will not do that. We will say, well, I don't do Yeah, no, no, I don't, yeah. I don't go to hobby or whatever, you know. I'm I'm not interested in that. No, you are interested in it because you're interested in that person. Yeah. So when you're trying to lead somebody, yes, you're you're counseling them. You care about them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're willing to do what it takes to get them to that next place, but you don't yes. rush it. No. How do you mm -hmm. know how to do that? Oh, I, well, I pray about my people. You know, they become my people uh, and before they come and I'm very aware of, I'm very aware at that moment when I'm counseling people you know I'm very there uh, and uh, how they where they lead me uh, whatever the next word is out of their mouth I follow that uh, I let them lead the conversation not me uh, but uh, what I do also, uh, if people make an appointment, I will say, write down what you want to talk about. Yeah. Uh, so that there is some kind of focus for them when they come in. Uh, and then I, I go on that. Uh, now, if it is a trauma, and there are many traumas in life, then I will lead them. To, did, did you learn anything from that? 
Yeah. Uh, you know, did, a, did you learn how to use yourself better? Uh, but I, off the get-go, will say to them, uh, you don't have to be fixed. If you're here to be fixed, you're at the wrong place. Mm-hmm. That's, that's beautiful. You know, I like you just the way you are. Yeah. So, so this last weekend, I gave a sermon, and it was on um, learning humbly. So we're, talking, we're in a series called mm-hmm. 30 Days to Live, mm-hmm. yes. and like at the foundation of it is, is if you're going to live 30 days well, you have to, you need to be willing to learn. Yeah. Um, somebody who's stubbornly, mm-hmm. they're stuck in their ways, aren't going to improve their life in those last 30 days. Yeah. Uh, but in that, in that uh, question or in that um, theme of sorts, mm-hmm. y- you kind of get into this place where, where you realize that people disagree about stuff. Oh, yes. All the oh, time. Oh, yeah. And yeah. it sounds like when you're counseling somebody, you're, you're in that place a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, this person I'm counseling thinks very differently than I do about this, and it's evident. Yes. <laughs> do you just tell them what you think? Uh, if, if they are, uh, and I have a few that are coming, uh, living together, unmarried, mm-hmm. you know, and that would be against what I believe. But I will work with them. Uh, but every now and then I will say to them, uh, you know what I feel about this. It's what my faith leads me to feel. And they say, oh, yes, we know, Jeanette. Mm-hmm. And then, then I go on. Okay. See, I don't try to convince them to, to think the way I think. But I have to honor myself. And I guess if I see something, uh, Sam, uh, that also hurts my heart, is people not honoring who they are. Tell me more about that. That, that they don't honor themselves. And I don't mean in a selfish way, but I, you know, I am Jeanette Stone, and you, as you are Sam, uh, and to, to treasure that, to honor that, uh, that doesn't fit me. You know what I mean? Uh, to be able to say that, uh, yeah. and to be able to say that to other people, but at the same time, be into what they're into. Yeah, totally. It's so interesting because because I think that people fear that if they associate with somebody who thinks differently than yeah, they yeah, than yeah, they do, yeah. and they don't convince them of it, then the, then the yes. friendship has to end. Yes. And I think it sounds like you do a beautiful job of being willing to think differently than other people, yes, yes. but still have this relationship that's deeply formative for yes. both of you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. But look how God trained me, sweetheart. Uh, I, I, excuse me. I come from a southern family, that's fine. so people are usually honey and sweetheart. Um, um, you know, my father was a pedophile and was in prison uh. for years in Detroit. So I uh, have always been a thinker. You know what I mean? Said and, and analyzed everything. Uh, God made me that way. So I lived with people who thought differently than me. Do you see how God trains us? Yeah. Uh, and he is the only one. And, of course, I'm doing uh, Moses now. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, remember Moses murdered somebody and went to the desert for 40, yada, yada, yada. God is the only one that is willing to put us through whatever it takes to make us all of what we are. Wow. Is it? Okay, let me hear that again. God is the only one who's willing to put us through all that it takes to make us who we are. Yes, yes. Wow. I, I see it over and over and over again. Yes. So we go through stuff. Oh, yeah. And God's willing to let us go through it. Oh, definitely, definitely. Right, right. He doesn't rescue. He did not rescue Moses. Uh, he did not, and remember when, when God called Moses to go rescue the Israelites, and God, and you know, Moses had a self-esteem problem. Uh, God didn't even deal with that. Huh. God didn't even begin to have feel better about himself. Himself. <laughs> so, so when you're counseling somebody, your your goal is not to necessarily make them feel better about themselves. No, no, uh, uh-uh, no. What's uh, your goal? Uh, uh-uh. my goal is to have them see what you know who they are and how they can better use who they are. And if, there, if there's a crisis, and sometimes, of course, there's a crisis, there's a call, and they have to come right away, then I walk into the crisis uh, and, and, and try to put some kind of peace in it, you know, that it's manageable, and have that person know they're not alone. Yeah. And really, though, counseling also, there's a, there's a part of counseling uh, that you're just paying for the best friend you've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> And there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> oh, right, uh, right. That, really, that's what you're doing. Yeah. You're, you're paying for the best friend you ever had. Uh-huh. That's beautiful. Yeah. Um, man, there's so many directions I want to go to with this. Okay. So I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, the one thing I, I, I want to get back to mm-hmm. um, is this. I think that you mentioned 
you've been disappointed by people yes. and their faith yes. Yes. over the past number, uh, over the past year. Yes. And, and that's real, right? I think that uh-huh. a lot uh-huh. of people have experienced uh-huh. a lot of surprises in what people will say, what people will think. Uh-huh. That's just uh-huh. different than them. And so they're so surprised by it. Yes. But you also said that there's something that looks like strong faith. Mm-hmm. And, and so I want to get back to that for just a little bit. Okay. Um, as you think about people, what, what, what is needed more in people's lives in order to actually encounter circumstances like this past year mm-hmm. and not one lose faith? Cause mm-hmm. honestly the, the numbers are, are frightening. Like there's people yeah, that are yeah. losing faith in droves because of this past year, like That's leaving, right. the, excuse me, leaving the church. Not yes. necessarily always losing faith. Yes. yes. Yeah, I want to distinguish that. Mm-hmm. Um, but then secondly, um, there are people that are just in really bad places because of this year. Oh, yeah. Yes. So yes. first, what does it look like to have strong and durable faith? Mm-hmm. And, and how does that help us actually encounter these years? And then secondly, you mentioned going through difficult stuff. God doesn't prevent us from that. No. How do those things work together? The thing is, knowing that, knowing that God is sovereign and that there will, if there's nothing that comes into our lives that he doesn't oversee. And, and so even though the worst of the worst may have happened, uh, to know, okay, uh, you know, God is going to use that. But strong faith would be, the, of course I've got Moses on my mind now, uh, would be knowing God w- is with us. This is what Mo- uh, God said to Moses, uh, yes, you can do this. I'm going to be with you. Uh, how, but how will people know that? Uh, Moses asked, because I'm going to be with you. <laughs> and I think that there, is, there are people that you know God is with them. Uh, and because they've walked beside God, God has walked beside them, and you, and you just know it. Uh, and, and so you, you relate to that person. I get disappointed, and I go off the rails more uh, with Christians than I ever do. I can be in a whole room full of non-Christians, and it does not, I lived with that. Uh, I'm right at home. Yeah. Uh, but a room full of, non- of Christians who are not living the life, yeah. who are not what they should, what I think they should be, say, I'm gonna, I want to come right at them. And oftentimes I do. <laughs> I will go to that person, uh, you know, nine times out of ten. You know, I'm going to go to that person and, and tell them what I see. I think we're called to do that. Uh, that's probably, for me, what bothers me the most. What do you mean? So what, it bothers you the most when people are Christians and they don't live like it. Yes. It breaks my heart. Okay. That grieves me more than a whole room full of non-Christians. Do you think we've gotten the idea of what living like a Christian look should live like wrong in large part? So, mm-hmm. ha, and, uh, sorry, nah. let me rephrase that. In 2021, yes. are people thinking that living like a Christian is different than it actually should be? Yes. And what are the specific things for you that look like that? Uh, we have uh, we have decided uh, that uh, you know someone's out to get us and we're afraid. But okay. see, someone's always out to get us, honey. <laughs> we have got Satan right at my shoulder, right here. And what about is wonderful about Satan? Truly, he always tells us the truth. <laughs> uh, you know, he he. I've given him a basket full of stuff he can blame me on, right? Uh, truly. True, yep. real, real stuff, uh, and so he'll, he will, yeah. He always tells us the truth, partly. Yeah. Uh, he tells us partly the truth. Uh, so the fact that uh, to know that we're living through this, you know, this time right now, but we should have peace. We should have confidence. And I know who the winner is, by the way. And yeah. you know who the winner is. Well, what more? And so we don't. So being with people who think differently. Say uh, Christians. Yeah. Uh, I had to learn uh, because I was on the debating team in Detroit. I had to learn I didn't have to le- had to win. That has helped me with my counseling. And so, because I don't have to win an argument, say with any anybody, I've already won. Huh. Because there's there's no no disagreement. 
That is beautiful. So for me, like that, that right there is, is one key to what we're all about on this podcast, having better conversations because uh, yes, you don't yes. have a stake. Like you don't no, care no. if you win or not. No, no, There's I don't. not a point of, there's not a comp competition. It's about you growing. Yes. Just like the other person's going. And that, if you both always, come to that, yes. it's a beautiful thing. Yes. And that's what faith looks like too. It's to, it's mm -hmm. to, in the face of any opposition, know I'm comfortable hearing this Yes. because I already know what I believe. That's right. And I mean, when I did student ministry way back in the day, uh -huh. um, my biggest thing with students was your, your, if your faith gets challenged when you go to college, it's probably because yes. your God was too small. And I think that that's a place that a lot of people are at right now. If, if your assumption that God is in a particular little box yes. and it gets challenged, it's not God that's getting challenged. It's no, your no, view of who God is yes. that's getting challenged. But let's remember, it's okay to be challenged. Yeah, totally. It is. It is. It's oh, essential. Yeah. It's so it's important. Wonderful. Yeah, the potential in that is wonderful. Right? And, yeah. and, and you're not... If your view of God shifts because you've learned oh. something from somebody, yes. that's not you losing, mm -mm. that's you winning. Winning, that's right, that's right. Uh -huh. yeah. I, I, my, this, and maybe it's this year that's done that to me, the fact that... Uh, being a Christian, what does that mean? It means I have a relationship with Jesus, yes. right? Yes, number one. Uh, and I spoke recently and said, you know, people say God is love, but love is not God. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we think uh, being a Christian means I'm always loving or, or I'm always nice. No, being a Christian means I have a relationship with Jesus, and he takes me as I am. You know, I'm flawed. Uh, right, uh, you know, I I can I have a hot temper, and and especially with Christians, uh, you know, it just yeah, I just go off the rails. Uh, so right, uh -huh. <laughs> that, well, you said so much there. The first, God is love, but love is not God. Yes, and that's a very important distinction, oh, it, and yes. it's super it, helpful. Uh -huh. And then too, uh -huh. like just because you're a Christian doesn't mean like Jesus got upset, and you shouldn't. And, yes, and honestly, that is he was loving in his upsetness. Yes. And, and there's yes. a, it's an act of love. Yes. And I think that's yes. so true. Mm -hmm. right? Yes. So do people, this is a, a little bit of a tangent, but that's whatever, right. let's that's just go with it. it. <laughs> the, the, the fact that Jesus is loving in, in his anger, I think sometimes legitimizes people's reason for wanting to prove themselves to be right. Yes. So, yes. I mean, yes. you, you've had this, you have this wonderful line that you walk where you don't care if they believe you or agree mm -hmm. with you or not mm -mm. but you care that you're able to have a conversation together yes that's right that's and right. that's hard for people to get to i think okay. Okay. how like how do people i think people are so invested in winning yes that that's the the thing yes right but but to be able to verbalize it to yourself to talk yeah. to self uh and to say okay whatever it might come come up uh i'm not going to beat over this per i'm not going to beat this person yeah i'm not going to win over this person in fact i want that person to feel better about themselves yeah because they have talked to me yeah uh, not worse about themselves yeah uh, you know, and i think in the christian life in christian world in church uh we will get people to feel horrible about themselves you know yeah, we have a tendency to do that. And somehow we think that we have brought them to repenting, to whatever, to whatever. If we, you know, if they're falling on the floor, you know, they're they're beaten. We've beaten the guy out. Uh, no, that would be different than if I went to Sam, yeah. right? And whatever Sam did, you haven't done anything that I want to tell everybody. Uh, uh, <laughs> Unless no, I'm no. Just teasing, just <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, if then me telling you, you know, Sam, I heard, yeah. yada yada yada, you know, and uh, is is that true? Mm -hmm. See that, you know, that's not part of who you are. That that's not part of who you are. It's like the first thing you said today, okay. and I I just okay. love it. It's so so good. Um, I, I was just reading something from a, a speaker, a preacher that I really really respect. Mm. He's out of New York, in New York. Mm. And his big thing was, um, oh gosh, I'm gonna totally botch this. Um, but it was some, it was about sin, right? Yes. We, yes. Um, a lot of people maybe would say we don't talk enough about sin mm -hmm. or sins. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the reality is, if you start with sins, mm -hmm. you've lost people and you've harmed people. Yes. If you start with the fact that at our so here, here's my my question. Sorry, okay. I'm kind of going all over the place, yes, but I'm gonna refine it here. Mm -hmm. the, the first thing is this. He would say, 
we are good. We are made good mm -hmm. at our core. Mm -hmm. We've also have a sinful nature yes. at our core. Yes. But I think we start with too often we're sinful. Yes. And forget that God made us in his image. That's right. And that's I, right. I think there's a beautiful that's thing right. there. Oh, I don't yeah. know. Right. Oh, yeah. I agree. And I think it, that we would bring more people into church, although I think church is changing. Uh, and we have to be that okay with that. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't know where it's going. You know, I don't have a master plan with that. I, you know. If you but, do, let me know. Okay. okay if I you will. find it, please. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I do think you know, and that's okay. That it's it's changing. I think. Uh, so right, when we beat people over the head, and you know, we'll say, okay, Christians don't do whatever, whatever, whatever. And, by the way, I think, but uh, disagree with me if you want to. And I, t I say that a lot when I'm counseling. Get, disagree with me if you want to. Uh, the Ten Commandments mm -hmm. describes God's ca character. More than anything, yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah uh -huh, right. Absolutely. Uh, which, which led me to things don't fit you. See, uh, God lying doesn't fit God's care who he is. And so there are some things that don't fit who we are. Yeah. You see that? Yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, That's beautiful. Yeah, but God did that. Yeah. God. God. Yeah. God. He's wonderful. Man. <laughs> we could go on and on for a long time, uh, but I, I don't want to. I don't want to de-emphasize the points we've already made. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna okay. let us finish up here with just one more thing. Okay. Um. And and that's this. As you think about people moving forward, mm -hmm. because that's what I think the next year is going to be about, yes, moving forward. Definitely. Um, there's there's going to have to be a period of um, grief if you need to grieve because you've lost something. Mm -hmm. um, some people probably don't feel like they have, and that's mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. But there have to be a period of grief. Mm -hmm. um, right. What is your advice? What would you counsel someone to help them move forward in the most healthy way? Okay. In their Christian walk? Yeah, in the Christian walk. I've changed. Uh, how I do that now. Uh, thank you, dear Father, for having me change. I'm such a stubborn person. Uh, <laughs> how he did that, I don't know. Uh, you know, I used to, and I'm a Bible reader, and I start reading the Bible at nine. Uh, I could not read at nine. Uh, I couldn't hardly do anything at nine. Uh, but so I had to skip mo most of the words, and I read through that whole thing. But that was God that put that hunger in me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I used to think, okay, these are the steps to being a great Christian. Uh, you should pray every morning uh, before you eat breakfast. We have all these rules yeah. that are <laughs> they're not written in the Bible. Uh, and all of these things. And for decades, this is what was done. And you should read the Bible, and you should do no. To, what I've changed, and maybe because of my own life and what you know, I'm feeling, to bring God into their life. Uh, and it says in uh, one of the Psalms, I think, uh, um, Thankfulness is the same thing as offering a sacrifice to God. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's what I did. I knew I had to, I wanted more of him. Mm -hmm. I didn't want more activity to bring him to me. I didn't, you know, I didn't want that. Uh, and uh, it, really, this was with, within the last five years. Uh, so uh, how could I do that? Well, I needed to be thankful uh, so every time, and I lose things all the time, uh, and every time I find some, thank you, dear Father. Thank, thank you. Uh, it, and, and so even now in my conversations with people, I will in the middle of the conversation, oh, thank you, dear Father, because uh, it's gotten to be such a habit with yeah. me. Uh, bringing him, see, not that he's not there, but to be aware that he's there. Yeah. Uh, and so that's what I uh, try, to, try to lead my people to. Uh, not so much uh, the duties that should be. Yeah. No, I want the relationship to, to be there. That, and, and the fact, I have a different relationship than you do. You will never have a relationship like I have because the difference is we're different. God's sure. the same. Yeah. But, so what I do, I shouldn't lay on you uh, because you are different than yeah. I am. Uh, and so... To be aware of that as, as mature Christians, you know. So that that means also, Sam. We always have to be thinking more than anything. Be be aware and be thinking and being awake. Yeah. You know, no matter who you're walking beside. Yeah. You know, where yeah. is this person? Uh, you know. Yeah. To be involved. Mm -hmm. I love that. 
Uh, so what I'm hearing you say is mm -hmm. that it's not to, to grow in your strength and your resilience and your, your, your um, character as a Christian, mm -hmm. it, it means bringing God in, yes. not so much forcing yourself on God. That's, yeah, yes, right. That's right. And not that you shouldn't read the Bible, pray. And I'm not. Those you know, are, we're all advocating for those things, yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, but no, yeah, bringing God into yourself. Right. And I think that's a big deal because, I mean, oh, yes. we're not talking about some like crazy, like whatever. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right, yeah, uh, right, I do. <laughs> but what, mm -hmm. I, what, I, what I am saying is, I, I think it's, it's helpful to know that. Mm -hmm. um, God can actually be part of every decision oh, you make. God every, can be somebody everything. you're grateful to yes. for so many things. Yes. And when you do that, it changes the way you act. It mm -hmm. changes the way mm -hmm. you interact with others. Mm -hmm. It changes your resilience. It changes so much. That's right. That's really beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. No. No. And God has done that within the last five years, which uh, I like my age. I like telling people how old I am. How old are you? Uh, 83. Uh, and I'll be 84 in September. Uh, Bill is 84, still fly fishing and downhill skiing. God oh, has just man. blessed us. Thank you, dear Father. Uh, so the fact that, um, but we're bo both very awake. <laughs> yeah. Call it. Both very awake. Um, uh, we both love history. Uh, I love reading fiction. I'm reading a whole series of 16 fiction books on Indians. It has nothing to do with spiritual I've been so to enjoy life yeah uh, and I, I love history I love and I like people that's what I learned though from my childhood see I I people are interesting to me uh, and I like people I love people actually but they don't have to like me uh, and I don't have to be liked uh, and that too then is a freedom uh, thing uh, and I hope would wish that for everyone in this room. I will pray that for everyone in this room. Uh, that um, it frees you then to be who you are. Mm -hmm. To just and, and people see it as self confidence, as whatever. It's not that. See, it, it's different than that. Yeah. Uh, and I have a hard time explaining it. But don't you think, Sam? The deeper things are, the harder it is to find words. Yeah. To just, you know, have you ever had just, you know, you knew you, something, but it took you a long time to get the words for it. All the time. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> yeah, me too. My right. literal, like, frustration in life is getting the words <laughs> Word, right, right for right. what right. I need to describe. Yeah, uh, yeah because you want to teach other people. Yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah uh, sh yeah. and share that with others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This has been an absolute pleasure, oh. and you are a gem. Thank you so much oh, for well, all you of the, your comments. Um, oh, thank you. And uh, I hope that for those who are listening or are watching, that it was as um, helpful to them as it is for me. Mm, thank you. And uh, thank you. with that, I'm going to say thank you all so much for tuning in. Thank you, Jeanette. Thank you. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you again okay. next week. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure. <laughs>